Okay, today I want to show you how to create a very simple double page spread in InDesign. Uh, something that looks like this. Uh, you have two pages, left and right. On the right hand side there's an image, on the left there's a text. In fact there's three columns of text plus a heading. We'll call it Drug Wars for argument's sake. So uh, let's have a look at what we need to do before we go into InDesign. So I'll just close that. Very important, whenever you are about to embark on an InDesign journey, that you have all your bits and pieces prepared earlier. So here I have got myself the text, which I simply called body copy, and that's just some words typed up in Microsoft Word. Uh, whatever your double page spread is about, it's really important to uh, type it up beforehand, get it approved, proofread it, spell check it, all the usual bits. And um, and all, I also have an image that I had scanned and prepared in Photoshop. And this image is um, its quite a big image. It's 72 megabytes. It's saved as a flat TIFF file. And it's saved in CMYK color mode. Now, that's the preferred format for images that go into InDesign. TIFF, CMYK, um, and of course, at 300 dots per inch. Now... I'll just close that and we'll have a look at that later on. I've got a nice folder on the desktop that's ready um, for me to store things in. But let's go ahead and launch InDesign. Now when you, uh, when you open up InDesign, uh, inevitably you get to this first screen uh, which tells you that you are in InDesign. You need to then go to File, New and Document. And this is the uh, presumption that you know what you want. Okay, so if I just show you the uh, new document setup. We are going to indicate here at the top, it says number of pages, that we want three pages. And the reason we ask for three and not two is because in InDesign, page one is always the cover page. It's always a single page. So because we want to create a double page spread, you need to type in three. And um, facing pages just simply means that both the left and the right pages are on the screen at the same time. Now the size, I'm going to go ahead and type in 270 millimeters for the width and 300 for the height. And that just is the same sort of size as these, like the Sunday magazine that comes with the uh, Sunday Age. Now number of columns, again, you can change this later on if you change your mind, but I'm going to put in three. The gutter, which um, indicates the space between the columns. Look, that can be anywhere between three and six millimeters. I'm just going to put in four. And the margin, um, now just before you click on margin, just make sure that that little chain link is un, it's, it's broken. So just click it to make sure it's a broken link like that. And then with your top margin, I'll type in 40. For the bottom, 15. And I'm just doing this based on experience. Inside, 30. And the outside will be 15 to match the bottom. Now, these margins and gutters um, and columns, we can change them uh, later on if we choose to. So if we're not happy with the way it looks, we can um, change our mind. So let's go ahead and click OK. And um, this is what we get. That's page one. I'll just zoom out just to show you what it looks like. So there you have page one, page two, and page three. The pink line indicates the margin box with the columns. So the columns sit comfortably inside the margin box. The black line is the edge of the page itself. And this white area here is the pasteboard. Now, to zoom in and out, you can either right click your mouse and you can see you can zoom in and out there. You can also go to view on the menu and zoom in and out. Uh, or you can use keyboard shortcuts, which is what I do. I just press down the command space bar. That gives me the magnifying tool or command spacebar plus option gives me the um, zoom out, zoom in and zoom out magnification. All right, a couple of things to do before we uh, start creating a double page spread. Um, I would like to show you this little function here. Um, it's the option of changing your viewing mode. Now, normal is, as it says, um, everything is on your screen, your margin lines, your column guides, your pasteboard area. You can see everything. But preview hides it all. And uh, just do that again, sorry. Preview. It hides it all, and it gives you a preview of what 
the magazine would look like or what the pages would look like if they were printed. Uh, a really quick and easy shortcut is just tapping on the W key on your keyboard. And that toggles between preview and normal, which is great. Uh, so look, let's start by um, deciding to bring in our first image. Um, and I'll go to preview mode because we don't need the margins and columns uh, yet. So I'll just go into preview mode by tapping the W key on my keyboard. And this is how you place your images into InDesign. Um, funny enough, it actually says the word place under file or command D is the shortcut. So you choose place. You go and find the location of um, your image and you click on, you select the image and then click open. As soon as you click open, um, your cursor grabs it like a little thumbnail preview and then it waits for you to click somewhere on the page to drop it. So I'm going to just click here on the right hand page, which is page three, and you'll notice straight away that it is actually um, quite a bit bigger than the page. Now this is the scary part, folks. So try to do this very carefully. Um, what you don't want to do is just go to the corner handles and try to reduce it that way. Because all you're doing by dragging those corner handles is simply cropping the image. I'll just Command Z to undo that. If you want to resize anything in InDesign, you have to remember to press Command and Shift on your keyboard and then you can drag these corner handles. Now, in this case, we just want to reduce it a little bit so it fits comfortably on that right-hand page. So I'm going to resize it and then let go of the Command Shift keys and drag it and position it roughly there. Now, I might just make it a little bit bigger because I actually want it slightly bigger than the page itself. Now, if you look closely, you'll see that there's a little bit of overhang. Okay, um, I'll show you what I mean. It's not snug to the edge of the page. It sort of runs over the page a little bit. And that's what we call bleed. Now, if you want anything to bleed off the edge of the page, so when it's printed, there's a nice, fine, crisp finish, you have to do that. It's nice and snug into the middle of the page. So it butts up beautifully to the middle, but it hangs over the other three sides. And that's what we want. Um, and look, it's up to you whether you want to move it up or down, but I might just uh, show a bit of cleavage about there. Beautiful. And that's it, guys. We have now placed our image on the page. Um, another important point to remember is you should never, ever increase the size of an image after you've placed it. So you don't do that. Because when you increase an image in size, you actually decrease the resolution. It's always better to reduce the size. So you, you place an image that's actually bigger than the page and reduce it because then there's no harm done. So the tip to remember is make sure that when you're scanning your artwork, when you're in Photoshop, saving your um, images, save them either to the size of the, of the image that you want on the page or bigger. Right, now we're ready to place our text article. And for this, I have to bring back my guidelines. So I'm just going to press W on the keyboard. And we're going to pop in the article in these three columns that you see on your left. So once again, the magic word there is place. We're going to place the text. So we go to File, Place. We've got our body copy from Microsoft Word already and waiting for us. And we... Um, we are we're going to place it onto the screen. So I got distracted then because someone opened the door as I'm recording. Now, um, let me just do that again because I got distracted and I stuffed it up. It's, um, I forgot to mention a very important point. Before you place your text, make sure that there's nothing selected on your page. Okay, so just click anywhere outside the page to deselect it. And then you go to File, you go to Place, there's the body copy, click Open, and there you have it. You've grabbed the text, your cursor's got a bit of an um, uh, indication that you've got the text. 
go to the middle of the first column, not the corner, not the edge, just the middle, and click once. Now, my, uh, in design, we'll place it comfortably into the first column, and then it's up to you to drag this um, handle up to the top, and that makes it fit snugly in the first column. It's a bit, this is like a bit of a uh, roller blind, where you can go up and down. So those middle handles in your text boxes are really important. Now, watch carefully. Down the bottom, you will notice there's a little red box. In fact, let me just go back and I'll show you another way of looking at it. When you place text, if you ever get this little red box at the bottom of your text box, it means that there is more text to be placed. So this is not the entire article. And we know that because we've got two more columns and I deliberately typed up a lot of words. So all you do to place the remainder of the text is you click on the little red box once. It grabs the remaining text. Once again, go to the middle of the second column, click once to place it. Drag the handle up so it's a nice snug fit. And then again, click on the little red box and pick up the remaining text. And look at that, there is actually quite a lot more hidden. But that doesn't concern me because I can actually make it fit another way. I can reduce the size of the body copy simply by selecting my type tool. Okay, that's that one there. And I can then click anywhere in the three columns, doesn't matter where. Go Command A on my keyboard to select all. And then at the very top here, you can see I've got my font specs. Okay, here it says 12 point. If I reduce that to, say, even 10, automatically it's starting to uh, close up. If I make it 9 points, which is about standard for a magazine, nine, 8 to 9 points is about the standard text size, straight away I've increased, uh, sorry, I've reduced the size of the text so now it fits onto the page. And I'll just zoom out a little bit so you can see it. Beautiful. That's what you want. Now, I mentioned earlier that you can change the, um, the width and the column columns after the fact. You can change the whole area um, of your margin box after the fact. So let's say you want a bit more space at the top of this left-hand page, page 2. This is what you do. You go to Layout. You go to margins and columns, and they're very important before you change any of these numbers that you tick this little box that says enable layout adjustment. And then if I start increasing the top margin, can you see what's happening? It's actually lowering the top margin, and at the same time, it's adjusting my columns of text. It's beautiful. So I could say, okay, just by adjusting the top margin, I've made more space at the top of uh, page two, and I've <clears throat> made it look a bit more um, uniformed. I can also decide if I want to that I want four columns, not three. And then I've got to make some um, manual adjustments there, or I can go from three to two, but we'll leave it at three, and click OK. Look, the reason I did that was simply to um, make some space at the top of the second page for my heading. Now I'll just press W to show you a preview of what it looks like. So let's get in there and then press W again and now I'm ready to place my heading or to actually in this case type my heading. So once again I go to the type tool and the same as Photoshop and Illustrator, if you want to type on the page, you just press and drag and create a text box. So I'll just create one about so big. At this stage, I might just press Command 1 on my keyboard to zoom in. You can see the cursor blinking. I know the heading for this article is going to be Drug Wars. So I'm just going to type in D-R-U-G-W-A-R-S. And that's one word. And I'll just highlight the word and choose a font that I think is fitting. And let me just find something that is kind of like condensed. Maybe I'll just go for good old impact. Where's impact? Um, there it is. Don't mind impact. And I'll make the size of the text 
If let's go to 60. Watch what happens if you go bigger in size than the text box. So if I go um, a bit crazy and type in 120 for my text size, <clears throat> this is what happens. The text box is too small to contain the increased text size. So if this happens, don't panic. All you have to do is go back to the arrow on your toolbox and make the text box bigger. Even if you drag it in, as long as you know you've got that little red box on your text box to indicate that it's hidden, that little red box there, you don't have to panic. You just resize the text box with the pointer tool or the arrow tool. So at the moment, look, we'll just position that here. And um, I'll just go back to fit in window. And that's command option zero. And look, at this stage, if I wanted to make that heading span the width of my three columns, I can hold down the command shift key and drag it out. I can drag the text box and that way I can resize it without knowing its numerical value. I can resize it and decide, look, it's going to fit exactly to the width of my three columns. So that's another way of resizing text and usually that works better for headings. Now, <clears throat> if I wanted to change the heading, I can go back to the type tool, I can select it and then retype a new word. The same way I can change uh, the font. If I want to move it, I have to go to the arrow tool. Okay, now one more little thing that I'll do is I'll just, on the, on the uh, second page, I'm just going to draw a little rectangle shape. And I'm just going to position the rectangle around about there. Now, at the moment, it's just a rectangle with no color, no feel, and everything's black and white. And this brings me up to my next section, which is applying color. Okay, now, there's a couple of things to remember when you apply color. And I'll just move this across. You can apply color to shapes, images, backgrounds, and so on, or you can apply color to text. And I'm talking about the swatches palette, which is should be on your screen. If you don't have the swatches palette on your screen, you can easily grab it from the window menu, go to color, and there it is there, swatches. So I'll just bring that a little bit over. Where's my swatches? Now, when you open up InDesign, you get um, some really basic primary colors. Um, these are in cyan, magenta, yellow, and black values. You can mix your own colors, so you can go to this little pop-up menu here, and it says New Color Swatch. And if you know the percentages, you can type them in there. You can go and choose um, the Pantone Color Library from here. So if you choose Pantone Process Coded, you get access to all the Pantone colors that printers use. And you can just choose one that you like, click OK, and it's yours. Um, it's added to the swatch um, palette. We're going to do something different in a little while. We're going to actually sample colors from the image of the girl that's on the right-hand page. But before I do that, let me show you how you apply color. So I'll just deselect everything by clicking anywhere outside my um, text and graphics. So just click in there. If I want to color the heading, um, two things to remember. Number one, select the text box first. And number two, in your swatch palette, make sure you click on T. Now T is applying color to text. It's formatting affects text only. Now you can see that by clicking on the T, we've got black as our color. If I click on this pretty ugly cyan color, straight away I've changed the color of my text. Now if I want to change the color of my rectangle, I click on the rectangle first. I go to my swatch palette, make sure that this button is selected, and we've got two little icons here. The top one will fill the rectangle with a color, and the bottom one, if you choose that, it'll actually color the outline of the rectangle, which is called the stroke. Now, I don't want a stroke. I don't want to have an outline, so I'm just gonna click on none for that. I'm gonna highlight fill, um, and for this, I'll just click an ugly magenta color. OK, 
Okay, so that's pretty crude at the moment. And uh, if I zoom out and press W, that's what I've got so far. But I would recommend, if you want to really learn about colour mixing or choosing colour for magazines, it's always best to sample colours from the image that's on the page in the, in the first place. Let's close that. So we've got this image of a girl holding a syringe and um, some interesting colours in the background. Let's say, for argument's sake, that I really like that pink colour and I want to sample that and use it in my swatch palette. Over in your toolbox, you have a, um, an eyedropper tool. Okay, looks like that. There it is, eyedropper tool. If you select your eyedropper tool and then hold the option key, you can actually go around the page and you can actually sample different colours. Now while I'm clicking with your um, option eyedropper tool, have a look at this little um, square here. It actually picks up all the colours that I am sampling with the eyedropper tool. So that orange colour near the hairline, the brown colour over here, the pink there, the blue down here. So if I want this sort of, sort of medium pink, I sample it with the option key pressed down and the eyedropper. And then, if I bring this across, I go to the top right hand corner of my swatch palette. I choose this thing called um, New Color Swatch. And I'll just zoom out a bit. I uncheck the box that says Name with Color Value and I give it a name. So I might call it uh, Hot Pink. And it's already cyan, magenta, yellow, and black because the image has been saved in CMYK. Click OK. And presto, it has been added to my swatch palette. And I can do that again. I can take the option key, press it down, um, go to my, hang on, go to my artwork and sample that blue colour. Uh, maybe this blue colour here. New swatch. Give it another name. Um, I don't know, sexy blue. If there is such a thing, click OK. And then just one more sample. I will go and sample this orangey colour. I'm actually maybe the yellow of her hair, this baby ship brown colour from the hair. New colour. And I'll call this um well, should I do it? Yeah, baby shit brown. Excuse the language. And one more um, option click the cheek. Just here, it's got a really subtle, um, kind of creamy colour. Pick that up there, yeah, about there. Uh, new colour swatch, and I'll call this um, soft buff or cream. All right, now we've got some new colours, which means I can now go and select my text box. And instead of that um, ugly cyan colour, click on the T up here. Instead of that colour, I'm going to change it to a hot pink. Instead of this uh, magenta colour for my shape, I'll change that to maybe this brown or maybe the blue. And for the background colour, instead of white, I'm just going to draw a new rectangle. So I've got the rectangle tool. I'm going to draw a really big rectangle shape really big, can you see that? And I'm going to turn it into that soft buff colour. Now, mind you, when you draw a new shape over the existing shapes on the page, it actually covers everything. So the way you can get around that is you can go to the object menu and you can choose arrange, send to back. And there you have it folks. I now have a buff colour background. Uh, get rid of swatches and deselect everything and there's my double page spread all finished and look I could go to town I could I could spend more time looking at leading and kerning and so on but for now that's all you have to do as a basic introduction to InDesign and placing text and images onto the page as well as colorizing um, look try that see if it works if you have any questions come and see me but hopefully if you watch this tutorial a couple of times, this will give you a really good idea of what to do in InDesign. 
Um, thanks for watching and good luck. I'll just uh, close that. Should I save it? Yeah, why not? And uh, I'm just going to look. While you're saving your files, get into the habit of adding your name to the file name and then call it what it is. This is a magazine spread. Mag spread. And you can even call it by its title, which is Drug Wars. Now, one thing I should stress is that um, your InDesign files need to be saved into the same folder that contains the images that you've linked. So that's the folder there on the desktop. And that's because the images and the InDesign document file need to live in the same place. All right. Thanks for watching. I'm going to stop this right now.